where Congress and the White House have reached a deal, an unprecedented deal, to boost the economy. It's nearly $2 trillion. While Congress has not voted on it yet, the news of this means that it's expected to pass both chambers of the Congress tomorrow and continue on that way. This could all be very good news for our economy. Let's take a little bit of a look at the breakdown here. Take a look. 3.4 million people filed for unemployment last week, according to Morgan Stanley. That's nearly five times more than the highest week ever. People who get paid by the hour are the most hardest hit here. And now according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, three out of five Americans work for hourly wages. And again, this legislation is unprecedented and it's all meant to boost the economy as we all impacted by the coronavirus. I want you to take a look at the breakdown of what is in this stimulus package here. So this would send $1,200 checks to many Americans, create a $367 billion loan program for small businesses, and set up a $500 billion fund for industries, cities, and states. And now coming up a little later in the show, local governments are taking action tonight to help those small businesses. Meanwhile, we are following developing news in the coronavirus pandemic, focusing on facts, not fear. UC Davis health employees have tested positive for the coronavirus. ABC 10's Van 2 is live with an internal memo that was sent to UC Davis Medical Center employees just this week, Van. Well, Chris, hospital leaders claim that a healthcare worker who tested positive for the virus here last week got the infection at home and not here at the hospital because they weren't directly taking care of a coronavirus patient. Now they expect dozens of healthcare workers to call out sick in the coming days and weeks. That means staff, healthy staff, will have to pick up extra shifts. All of this according to inter internal memos we obtained tonight. This is not sitting well with the California Nurses Association, which represents nurses here. In a statement, the group says it demands employers take responsibility for infections caused at their facility, rather than blaming them on community transmission so they don't have to take financial responsibility for their workers' COVID-19 infections. This internal memo also says the number of positive community spread cases will increase dramatically due to increased testing capabilities that will allow staff to get results in an hour. That comes online this week. Hospital leadership really trying to keep staff here at ease, saying less than 1% of suspected coronavirus patients here actually turn out to have the infection. Video medical visits increase from 20 per day to 800 a day, and also 30% of urgent cancer-related services surgeries have helped save lives. UC Davis also say that when those sick health care workers come back, they'll have immunity. But that is difficult to take at face value. The CDC has stated that immune protection and response of coronavirus is still unknown. We are also learning that ICU beds here are at above average availability, but the hospital is in surge planning mode to double its capacity. Hospital officials telling workers it is important to stop wasting protective gear now for if and when a surge occurs. And the new nurses union tells us it won't stop fighting for protective gear. They are demanding all California hospitals to do more than droplet protection and adopt more strict guidelines as outlined by Cal OSHA. Mm -hmm. Our van two live with that developing news for us tonight. Keep in mind, there are now more than 2000 confirmed cases across the state. These numbers are from the California Department of Public Health, and they are expected to increase. As Van mentioned, 40 people have died from the virus. And tonight, during a video update, the governor said the first teenager in the state has died from the virus. We had the tragic loss uh, of a, lo a young life, uh, a teenager in Lancaster, uh, California. Uh, which underscores the enormity of the challenge in front of us, this health crisis, uh, and how it can impact anybody. The governor says an investigation into the teen's death is now underway. And listen to this. He says 50% of all cases in California have so far involved people ages 18 to 49. And from what we saw today, social distancing appears to be going okay in the Sacramento region. This is what rush hour looked like this evening in downtown. This video was taken around 5 o'clock when normally there would be bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. We also visited some parks in Sacramento County today where we found no one outside. Not only was it raining, but the county is asking people not to use playground equipment, though parks and golf courses remain open. 
Also tonight, South Lake Tahoe officials are asking people to stay away as a lack of medical resources is a growing concern for locals. Some are even calling for state officials to shut down Airbnb and short-term rentals in order to keep the crowds away. And now tonight, because so many local and small businesses in Sacramento are feeling impacts because of the coronavirus coverage, the shutdown that is statewide in California, several cities are now stepping up to the plate to make a difference here. And our Elena Howland spoke to several small businesses tonight about the moratorium that was put on evictions for commercial properties. Take a look. And every day we wake up and we think, okay, how can we run our business today? Stephanie Bazala and her fiance, Shane Twilla, just opened Identity Boutique four months ago in Doco, right across from the Golden One Center. Because they're not considered to be an essential business, the store had to close their doors too and move to online sales only. The lack of sales has them worried about being able to make their next rent payment. A January, February, typically slow months. Uh, so we were really looking forward to, you know, March, April. That's why the Sacramento City Council voted to approve an emergency ordinance which would ban evictions on commercial businesses during this time, just like they did for residential tenants last week. They want to pay their bills. They, they stake their whole lives on, on these particular entities. And this is the least we can probably do in the meantime. Lisa Kraft, owner of Honey Salon in Sacramento, says with or without the moratorium, it's a trickle down effect. I mean, we have a landlord, she has a bank, she has to pay her, her mortgage. So it's definitely a trickle effect. So, you know, if we're, we're risking eviction and then she's foreclosing. There's obviously no no win here. As hairstylists, they had to stop all business too. So Kraft says she was in touch with her landlord right away to come up with a plan. This moratorium was going to allow us to maybe focus on those payments where we have to pay and we can't defer or can't get out of for the next three months. And today, Sacramento County failed to vote on a moratorium to halt evictions in the county. Instead, they passed a resolution which has little enforcement power. So it is crucial right now. If you can shop local, do that. A lot of businesses feeling really uncertain right now. And if you're looking for a job, we have some information for you, too. If you're looking, check with your local grocery store, because tonight the state says there are over 10,000 job openings at grocery stores alone right now. Again, if you're interested in local opportunities, we have what you need to know on our website, abc10.com.